I found clips of some very famous celebrities speaking Spanish. And in this video, I'm gonna be reacting to every single one. The good, the bad, and just the downright weird. But that one's coming at the end, so be sure to stick around. Let's begin with our first. Esta noche in Los Angeles, uh, Universal Studios. <laughs> uh, do you like Latin America? Have you been there a couple of times? Sí. Um, cinco años pasado, o oh, hace cinco, cinco, no, cinco días. Uh, yo fue en México. Sí. Do you like Mexico? A mí me gusta México, a mí me gusta mexicanos. Hay muchos mexicanos en Los Ángeles. Hay muy, es muy importante hablar español en Los Ángeles. Okay, adiós. Thank you, Tyra. Okay. Tyra Banks. So, <laughs> so what can we say? Well, she speaks Spanish and she's speaking Spanish. She's out there in the real world speaking Spanish with people. And that is cool. I think for me, like, this is what it sounds like when you think in English and speak in Spanish. And you often see this in Spanish, with Spanish in particular, because, you know, in the US where Spanish is very widely spoken, you get a lot of people who kind of have some awareness of Spanish. And so you see this pattern of thinking in English and just kind of translating as you go in Spanish, and it kind of works. Um, you see that in a few different places here when when she's speaking. So for example, she says, cinco años pasado, which is wrong. Um, but, you, but the reason she says it is because that translates as five years ago. So in her head, she's thinking five years ago. So she says, cinco años pasado. Um, whereas instead she, should, she actually corrects herself later and she says, uh, hace cinco años, which is right. And then um, she said also at the end, uh, a mí me gusta, a mí, what did she say? A mí me gusta, some, a mí me gusta México, me gusta mexicanos. Um, so she's thinking, I like Mexicans, but in Spanish you need to say, I like the Mexicans. A mí me gustan, with a plural, a mí me gustan los mexicanos. Los Mexicanos. So it's, it's a good example of what happens when you think in English, speak in Spanish. But, you know, great to see her out there and speaking the language. Now let's see who's next. Sí, acabo de terminar la carrera de, de Cambridge, como dices, de, de árabe y español. Y también habló un poco de, de francés como en español. Pero el árabe me cuesta, me cuesta mucho más. Eh, y no sé por qué, bueno, siempre me han interesado mucho los, los idiomas y... Y, y por eso. <laughs> Con la rapidez que... Wow, okay, Freddie Highmore. So I know he's, he's a good linguist. His Spanish is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's got the complete package, really. Accent, check. Uh, accurate grammar, check. Like calm, confident delivery, check. I mean, it's really quite something. Now, it turns out that Freddie actually did a degree at Cambridge University in Spanish and Arabic, and he got a joint honors, or joint first, in fact, uh, in, in that. So he's had many years of studying uh, Spanish um, and other languages as well, which I guess is what leads to this level of fluency that he has. It is interesting, isn't it? I, when I, I'm always amazed when you get actors, especially child actors like him who've got school, who are super busy acting, and then while continuing their acting career, they go on and they do this double degree uh, at a university like Cambridge, and then they get such good results. It just goes to show, like whoever we are, you know, it's, it's anything is possible, but you've got to put in that hard work. Personally, I find this a real inspiration whenever I think about how I use my own time. I, I see people like Freddie here and I think, wow, like, okay, if he's got time to do that, I can step up my game a bit with my languages. Uh, okay, let's see who's next. Bueno, cuando tenía 15 años, yo estaba estudiando español en el Colegio Nueva York y la profesora nos, nos han dicho, eh, Bueno, hay una oportunidad a ir a España a estudiar ahí. Entonces yo hacía un intercambio y vivía con una familia en el centro de España, cerca de Toledo. Y me encantó y fue como un, una temporada en mi vida muy importante. Y me encanta España, la cultura latina. Siempre me voy a México, por ejemplo. Me, me gusta mucho la cultura, la lengua, la, la gente. Así que lo aprendiste como... Another knockout. Look at that. Gwyneth Paltrow speaking Spanish. I had no idea. So really, really great stuff here. She's got a very good accent. She, her, her accuracy is really good. She's not making mistakes. She's just speaking with this cool, calm demeanor, just like Freddie Highmore was. 
That's really impressive. So, so what she was saying is that she, when she was 15 years old, she was studying Spanish. She got an opportunity to go on a study abroad trip at an exchange to Spain, to Toledo, where she stayed with her host family. And so clearly, like, she's got this upbringing. Or she's, so Spanish has been part of her life as she was growing up. And as we've seen in various videos that I've made in, in this channel, especially this one over here about Lucy, who learned great Spanish at a similar age. As you see here, like, you've got when the language can form part of your upbringing, like that's when it can really solidify. But she's kept it up, she speaks really, really well. I think for me, like just quite apart from the, the accuracy of the, of the language that she's using, and granted this is a very you know common topic. I mean, how many times have we all explained you know, why we speak a particular language? We kind of have that routine down, right? Um, but I think what's, what I find most impressive about this is her accent is very good. It's a very natural accent. Uh, and when she's speaking, you can hear that you know, often English speakers tend to swallow, we tend to swallow our vowels a little bit. Um, we kind of just let the, let the end of words just kind of disappear off into the ether. But she doesn't do this. She's pronouncing her vowels very clearly right until the end of the word, which kind of gives her that, that, that the accent that sounds really nice and polished. I'm impressed. All right, let's see who's next. Excellent. Okay. You know, when... Cuando yo in uh, la escuela in uh, Liverpool in Inglaterra, cuando yo uh, tiene 11 años, yo estudio estudiando estudia estudio something español. Sí, naturalmente amigo, sí. Hey. And this is what I learned. Tre That's so cool. Paul McCartney speaking Spanish, cool. So I think what, to me, for me, what this shows is a very good example of how English speakers struggle with verbs in Spanish. And we always, I always hear this from, from students uh, or people learning Romance languages, verbs just kind of, they just trip you up. And if you don't really spend the time to master them using like a, using a kind of more natural learning method, like a story learning method, for example, where, where you kind of learn in a more, in a more um, passive input-based way like native speakers do. You see this when, when people kind of study in very formal ways, and he was talking there about how he learned Spanish at school. Verbs often just don't bed themselves down. And so you've got him saying things here like, uh, cuando yo en la escuela. Cuando yo, en la, uh, when I, he's looking for the verb, he can't find it, en la escuela. When I, in school, uh, what, what he needed was iba, cuando yo iba a la escuela, when I, Okay, I guess used to go to school when I when I was going to school when I went to school and then later on uh, he said cuando yo tiene once años and he kind of you can see that he knew it wasn't quite right and he started cycling through the verbs tiene thing or tenía whatever whatever it was he said um, whereas what he needed specifically was cuando yo tenía once años or even without the yo cuando tenía once años and it just goes to show that difficulty in Romance languages uh, and Latin-based languages of, of really nailing those uh, those verbs. And I think it also shows the importance of having set phrases in our language. We all we all speak with set phrases, right? So the, just things like the phrase "when I went to school" or "when I was at school." You know, when we say a phrase like that, "when I was at school" in English. We don't, we're not thinking, okay, what's the verb conjugation here? Like, is it was, were, am? We just say, when I was at school, it's a set phrase that we remember and then we kind of retrieve from our memory and then de deploy it whenever we need it. And languages are like this. All languages are like this. Um, and, 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 and so if he had some of this, a lot of the other speakers we've seen here in this video have got these set phrases that they kind of roll out quite well. He doesn't quite have that, but it just shows how important it is to not only learn your verbs, but also learn these kind of set phrases uh, that you can that you can use to describe certain situations, like when you were at school. But how cool is that to be up on stage and actually make the effort to speak Spanish? Set phrases. I have a few set phrases actually. One of my set phrases is you should like and subscribe to the channel and then turn on notifications so that you can get future videos. It's a set phrase that I use all the time. Anyway, let's see who's next. How can one help a person who knows that they have a problem with alcohol? 
tiene que saber cómo preguntar para ayudar si, vas a, si tiene dificultades, tiene que uh, creer. Yo no veo una gran diferencia entre problemas con alcohólico o drogas o, 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 o con dinero por el internet o con gambling o comida. No es porque tienen hambre, es porque se comen para su a, a, a calmar su dolor. Mm. Now, that was interesting. That was an interesting case of Ben Affleck. He can clearly speak Spanish. I mean, he's there doing an interview in Spanish, and he, he didn't have to do that. You know, they would have said to him before, you know, Ben, can we do this in Spanish? And, and he's obviously said yes. So he's got that confidence, and he can speak the language. But at the same time, he's kind of tripping up quite a lot, and you can tell that it's vocabulary. He's got, like, the foundation there of Spanish, but it's the vocabulary, certain words that he lacks. That's what's causing him those problems. And I think that comes when you don't frequently use the language, you know, because when you frequently speak Spanish, you've got, you've got the facility to either remember keywords or else talk your way around it. But one of the things I noticed he did that we see a lot in people that have good natural language ability is you can see him when he doesn't know a word, he'll, he'll figure out another way to say it. And so, for example, he was talking about, uh, so he's talking about different problems, different addictions. And he said, uh, dinero por internet. Dinero por internet. So like money online. And what he actually wanted to say was gambling. Uh, people that have problems or addictions to gambling. But he didn't know the word for gambling. So he's talking, well, how else can I say this? Uh, dinero por internet. It, online gambling, spending money online. And this is, a, this is a skill and an attitude that I really admire, which is that I want to communicate with you. I want to say something. I don't know the word I need but I'm gonna try and communicate it through other means. And so that's really, really, really great. As especially when you're doing a live interview like this and, you're, and, and you don't know a word, you know, language is, is, there's so much composure required to speak languages. And it's one of the things that's, that's really difficult. And so I really admire Ben just for being here and giving that interview in Spanish. Good job. Alright then, who's next? Sí, muchas veces. Me encanta Miami. Me encantó la película. Ah, y me gracias. gustaría saber cuál fue tu parte favorita de haber participado en esta película. Eh, hay muchas cosas, um, um, pero tengo que decir la verdad para verlo después, como ya terminada, completo, es algo que normalmente no recibo en mi negocio. Es que como, como actor, es... Es muy, es muy extraño para ver su película o poder verlo porque ser o, o objetivo es casi imposible. Sí. Porque recuerde cómo, cómo era, recuerde cómo eh, sentí. Uh, uh, sí, haciendo. sí, y, y es muy difícil tener la sensación que, que tienen cuando, cuando estás en, en el audience. Uh, y en esta película, cuando... Okay, that's another very interesting case. So, first up, I, I think she has a nice accent when she's speaking. She has, I like her Spanish accent. She's, she tr she's really trying. She, that accent comes from a familiarity with the language, which is great. I have the impression that she's, she's really trying hard to remember stuff, which, which, which suggests that she doesn't speak Spanish all that frequently. She's kind of clutching at straws a little bit. I, I, I think I'd characterize her Spanish as being kind of uh, as speaking in set phrases. We mentioned this with this earlier about speaking in set phrases, like phrases that she remembers, and then little bits in between, uh, which she's kind of struggling to to put in. And so, and once again, this kind of shows the importance of how, if you learn specific phrases and chunks of language, how they can actually save you when you're in a slightly trickier situation because you don't have to remember every single word, you could just uh, you know, reel out the chunks of language. And so she was saying things like, uh, tengo que decir, I have to say. And then she had, uh, es casi imposible, it's almost impossible. Uh, tenía la sensación que, I, I had the feeling, I had the impression that. And so she's kind of like, she, she's learned these chunks somewhere and she's using them and that's what's getting her through the, the interview, but a little bit like Ben Affleck before, she's kind of like not quite got the vocab she needs to, 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 to express herself like freely. But yet again, in this scenario where you're doing an interview in Spanish about a film, I mean, how cool is that? So it turns out that, um, that she actually picked up 
Spanish when she was growing up in Austin, Texas. She 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 had a, a, a Spanish speaking laborers in her garden and things like that. So she got exposure to lots of Spanish. And so I'm guessing that that she she had the chance to kind of speak to these people then and learned a bit of Spanish then. And, and she's got these kind of chunks in her in her mind, but then and she still remembers them. But other more diverse Spanish vocabulary is just not quite there for her. But again, mad props for doing these interviews in Spanish. These people are fantastic. Let's see who's next. Una hora, una hora y media norte de la bordera de México, ¿sí? Sí. So, eh, mis hermanos mayores, todos uh, uh, amigos, amigas, mexicanas, mexicanos, ¿sí? So, me oye poco, me oye poco. And uh, that's where I learned to speak a little bit Let of Spanish. Let me tell you something, man. Oh, okay, what was that? That's, okay. So this, again, to me shows the benefit of like one of the things that makes Spanish a relatively easier language for English speakers to learn is that you can pretty much think in English and speak in Spanish. So like translate as you speak from English to Spanish and you kind of get away with it. It kind of works. And you can see that here that Matthew McConaughey can, he can speak Spanish, he can kind of get through, but his phraseology is not natural. His phraseology is kind of clearly coming from English, like when he says, mi, pi, mi primero días en este mundo. He's, tr he's trying to say like my first few days in this world. The, the grammar is all all over the place. Mi, mi primero días. I've got a, an agreement problem there. In este mundo. There's a gender issue there. Um, so he's kind of like, he, he's got an awareness of words and phrases and he's stringing them together and doing what he can. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like, it's just it's it's just odd. I think this this maybe this comes from a bit like Amber Heard before. I think that this you've got this situation where people grow up are surrounded by Spanish and have this kind of awareness of it, but have never actually properly studied the language. So you've got like an ability to speak without any of the detail that comes from studying. It's 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 really quite interesting. I've got to say though that the kind of sudden drawl that he that he has here when he's speaking Spanish. I do. I. I don't. I have mixed feelings about this. I. I'm not one to criticize people for their accents, but I do feel, especially for actors, that you've got this. There is. It is kind of incumbent on you to try a little bit harder with your pronunciation. I do feel that, like for an actor especially, you've got the ability to do accents to do these things, and it doesn't take much to move slightly away from your from the accent in your mother tongue, and to to put a little bit more effort into the Spanish accent. I don't know, I know people don't like me saying this, but I kind of do feel that's true. So I would prefer a little bit more effort into the accent there. But again, he's on live TV and he's speaking Spanish. You've got to give it to him. All right, who's next? Uh, estoy muy contento de estar aquí. Es uh, <laughs> mi primera vez aquí en Argentina. Uh, y me, me encanta Buenos Aires. Uh, fuimos a... Uh, un uh, partido de polo. Um, let me see. Uh, okay. Necesito practicar más. No, está, está muy bien. Okay. Está muy bien, muy bien. Gracias, gracias. Okay, so having slightly criticized Matthew McConaughey for the accent thing, this is what I'm talking about. So Will Smith here, like you can see, his, his Spanish is not the strongest, but he's really, he's present. He's kind of, he's, he's putting his heart and soul into the, into the accent. You don't really detect the American accent there. You detect bits of English, and that's like when he says the um and the uh, which is often a big giveaway from, from, from native English speakers. Because those are actually very English sounds. But he's really trying hard with the accent. And, he, and he's, for me, that, that is what it means to kind of pay. When, when you do speak the language already, that's what it means to pay respect to the language. So I, I, I love that. His, his Spanish needs some work, but that's cool. He knows that. Uh, apparently, he grew up speaking Spanish on the streets of Los Angeles. Uh, like I think many of the people here in this in this video, but I'm a huge Will Smith fan, and I think that's cool. All right, who's next? Interesante guiones que que yo pensaba bueno acá puedo aprender algo y esto puede llegar a ser una película que me gustaría ver a mí en el cine. Eso es en lo que siempre he hecho, pero es diferente pensar bueno me gustaría estar en una película como esta, pero si no sos conocido no te van a that is, uh, I can see it, it's a hard thing, I can see it for, for him. 
Now that's an interesting case. Before I talk about him, who's been your favorite so far? Let me know in the, in the comments and what you liked or what didn't like about. Now Vigo, is, he's an enigma. I mean, he's, he, he grew up multilingual. He speaks many languages. He's featured in my other videos as well. Very talented guy. When I listen to his Spanish, it's, it's, it's difficult to know what to make of it. It's like a mix of the entire world in, in one guy. It's like he's, he's speaking Spanish, I hear, an Iberian Spanish accent, and then suddenly it's like Argentina, and then I feel like I hear hints of Italian or French in there. You you get this sometimes with these people that speak lots of language. I remember languages. I remember hearing this from Pete Buttigieg in the video I did on on presidential candidates uh, speaking Spanish. I, I, I honestly I, I don't think there's much point in trying to analyze Vigo here. He's just totally unique, very talented guy, really cool. All right, then. who's next? Sí, hola, ¿cómo está ustedes? Yo soy, yo soy Jack Black. Mucho gusto. And the movie is in Spanish. Esta película se llama King Kong. ¿Cómo se llama en, en, uh, en español? King Kong. ¿Cómo se dice King? Rey. 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 Kong, Rey Kong. ¿Cómo se dice gorilla? Gorilla. Rey gorilla. <laughs> Mucho gusto. Gracias. Encantado. Adiós. La ciudad de México. <laughs> yeah, Jack Black. I mean, so I guess a comedian is a comedian is a comedian. So what I noticed from that, Spanish aside, is actually. It's on this topic of accent again. So we, again, from Matthew McConaughey to Will Smith to this, he doesn't really speak Spanish, but what about his accent? He's like, it's good. It's not, it's not completely accurate. It's kind of a, there's, there's hints of like, American tries to do foreign accent in there, but it's not a million miles off. And, he, and he's got like, well, you can see when he imitates what the reporter's saying there, he, it's pretty good. And this is, again, I, I think this is why I do kind of have, a, I do expect a little bit more from people with a high profile, people with a language background, people who are actors, because it doesn't take much to make the accent to do a good job or, or, or a decent attempt on an accent in, in a foreign language in Spanish. And so, and that's, so that's, I think, what I liked about Jack Black here. Language, this, it is theatre, you know, I do find when you speak when it comes to speaking a foreign language there's so much drama and theater and acting that you need to bring to the occasions because you're not speaking your own language and you do need to just find a way to step outside your own awareness your own personality and then just project this this confidence inside the interaction and there is one story about a guy who spoke over 50 languages and you can see this video right over here now he didn't speak all these languages fluently but his personality was such that he was able to learn a little bit go out and meet these people and speak to people in over 50 languages so this is the video that you should check out right now 